A text box is just that. It's a box that contains text. Doesn't sound too appeasing, does it? Well, not when I say it like that. But they're great attention grabbers. For example, the title of my document may not interest you, but if I take some key words in here or a key phrase, or let's do like two words here, keep it short, corrupt government, copy that and put it into a text box and put that box somewhere close to the top. Well, the box is different from the rest of the documents, so that will lure your eyes to it. And because the text in it is so short, you couldn't probably help yourself just to take a quick glance because it wouldn't be much work. And especially if I make the size of the font for the text within the text box a little bit larger. And you're probably wondering, like, ooh, what's this about? Which government's corrupt? Is it ours? Well, let's read to find out. Let me go ahead and click off so I can show you how you can insert a text box. Come up here, click on Insert, go to the text group, and there you go, text box. You can see when I hover over it, in the pop-up it says, Got Mussy Content? Oh, they got that from Got Milk. Well, got my attention. Put it in a text box. Okay. Click on the text box button, and you got two different types. You can use a built-in, where it has text that's pre-formatted, and also the box. Or you can come down below and draw your own box. We'll do both. First off, let's do a pre-formatted one like this one. You can see when I hover over it, it's Austin quote, and it says it's a pull quote. What are pull quotes? Well, when you want to take a quote from your document and put it in a text box, you're pulling it from the document into your box. So it's a pull quote. So it's things that you want to be able to place emphasis. Maybe for this section, this is about how it all started. Like for maybe this section, this is about corruption. And then maybe this section, another pull quote that says, this is how it all started. So you got kind of little key text boxes or quotes that lets the reader know where they're at within the document. So let's go ahead and do one here. Austin quote, click on it, and there you go. Grab your reader's attention with a great quote from the document or use this space to emphasize a key point. To place this text box anywhere on the page, just drag it. In any case, with it highlighted, let's just start typing over it with our own text, or you can copy and paste over it. Either way. Win a free lunch with Glenn Beck. Ooh, I like free lunches. In any case, visit our website for details. You can convert that into a hyperlink, which we talk about in another training video, or just type in the URL. In any case, it shorts to the point. It's something that's different when you click outside of it that in fact, it really distracts from the heading here. Maybe I need to use, well, another pull quote box or draw my own and not have it so popish that, well, it detracts. In any case, it does pull out, so it's got my attention. And the text is short, so I don't have to do much work. And if I like what I see, okay, I'll read more about the article or I'll visit the website. Or who's this Glenn Beck? You see? Okay, go ahead and click inside it. And you can make any changes or formatting changes to the text box as you do with the text on the outside of the box in the document. So if I go ahead and click and drag like that, come up here in the mini formatting toolbar and decrease the font size, hit enter. And I don't like align left. How about if we come up here and go to align center? Now it did it for both lines. Why? Because when you come up here, turn on the codes, both lines are in the same paragraph, and it's paragraph alignment, so it aligns the entire paragraph. Let's go ahead and turn off the codes. And you got your resizing handles that we talked about in an earlier training video on modifying pictures or images, and it applies to shapes, objects, and also text boxes. So you want to watch that training video. That you can go ahead and click and drag one of the resizing handles to make it larger, more vertically or horizontally. Let me go ahead and hit undo. Okay, well, it jumped. Well, if it does that to you, I'm going to have to come over and hover over the border of it until you can see a four-way arrow. You can click and drag it. Oh, there we go, right to the center, and it snaps right there. And we've got our layout options. Go ahead and click on it. And the default here for this one is top and bottom, so you can see text lines above it and below it, not around it, like something squares, Vail man. Let's go ahead and square it. Cool. And click off of it, and that's one option. Another is to come back up here, insert, text group, text box. you got to draw it yourself. Oh, joy. Go ahead and click on it, and you get a black cross. You can just go ahead and click and drag a box. Well, it doesn't matter too much about the size when you let go of the mouse because you got resizing handles, and you can type in whatever you want, and you can do the formatting in the drawn text box. 
well, we did in the pull quote or the built-in text box. Hold down the shift key, hit the home key on the keyboard. It selects everything from the end of the line to the beginning. And then I can go ahead and right click on it and come up here, change the font, Arial, hit enter. Okay, well, you get the idea. Let's go ahead and hit enter and let's insert a picture because you can do that in text boxes. Come up here, click on the insert tab, go to the illustrations group. Let's do an online picture. And let's do ghost. Why? Let's say the ghost of past founding fathers are come to haunt us to warn us that we better not lose our freedoms or boo. Let's go for something happy because our founders are cheering for us. So let's go ahead and do a happy ghost. Check him. Click on insert. And well, if he gets cut off, you can do one of a couple of things. You can see the resizing handles for the uh, ghost hover over the bottom right hand corner because when we click and drag it it'll keep it proportional as we talked about in an earlier training video so when you see arrows pointing in opposite directions click and drag to push it in you can do it that way or let me hit undo you can go ahead and click inside the text box and resize the text box instead bottom right hand corner resizing handle click and drag and there you go and what you can do with your text boxes like if it's something that you want to be able to have an image in it but the image is going to be blended in with the text. In other words, you don't want a white background for your text box. Well, if the text box is selected, you can come up here, click on the, the Related Contextual Format tab, and then go to the Shape Styles group, click on Shape Fill, and say No Fill. And you can see a preview of it there. Let me see how you can see the text now comes through because, well, there's no fill. Well, except for the ghost. The ghost is taking up some fill space. And as we learned in earlier training videos, you can also make the ghost at least the whiteness around them, the background disappear. So there's a lot you can do here. And if you want to fill color for that, well, that's so dokie. Or we can go ahead and do some shape styles. Maybe this one right here, subtle effect purple accent four. Because purple is kind of a spooky thing. And you can also do a shape outline, click on the drop down arrow, maybe red. And when you select red, if it's not thick enough, you can give it some weight. Okay, click off, Shape Effects. I'm going through this pretty quickly so you can see the different formatting options, but it's pretty simplistic. Just know that they're there. The fill, the outline, the effects, like maybe give them a warm, glowing, glowing, warm glow, something really red. Click on it, and oh, not too bad. And you can select the image and work with the image, again, as we talked about in an earlier training video, that you can come up here, click on the Related Contextual Format tab, Come over, click on Remove Background, and oh, it removed everything. So we better mark the areas to keep. In any case, you know how to do that. Just click on Mark Areas to Keep, and then click and drag. Oh, we kept his mouth. Let's move over here, and whoa, we got a lot of work to do. It's not keeping everything that I'd like. In any case, let's go ahead and discard all changes and keep it as is. I wanted to show you that there are options to clean this up so it doesn't look as, well, as bad as it is. But that's what the training videos are for. We learn one piece at a time that when you put it all together, you're going to have something just beautiful. So when you get your beautiful pull quote box, let's go ahead and click off. And you're like, man, I like that. I'd like to keep that. So it's available in every new document. Go ahead and click on the border to select the entire text box. And then come up here, click on the insert tab. I know you're thinking, what? Insert? Well, if we go back to the text group and click on text box, you can go ahead and save your selection to the text box gallery. So what I have selected, click on it, and the name of it is whatever, and then the gallery's text boxes, meaning that when I come over here and click on the text box in a new document, remember built-in quotes that we had, like the Austin here? Well, it'll be in that text box's gallery as opposed to something else, but let's keep it simple. And then the categories built in, if you want to go ahead and create a new category, it's not actually a built-in text box, but you could leave it as such, because built-in is what we inserted over here. Let's just go with general. And then as far as the description, go ahead and type one in. We'll say, This is the ghost of the founder's past, and we say unto you, hang on to your freedoms, and not say whatever. So you can go ahead and save this as a building block, and we got a whole separate training video on building blocks, so we're just keeping it simple here. And then the options, insert content only, as opposed to insert content in its own paragraph, 
or in its own page. So you can have it on a separate page. Let's just keep contents only. And then go ahead and click okie dokie. That's it. So if I come up here and click on the file tab, go down to new, blank document, and I'm ready to insert that cool pull quote. Come up here, click on insert, go to the text group, text box. Now remember, it should be somewhere in the gallery here. We just have to click to scroll down to find it at the very bottom, I wager, in the general part, because it's not a built-in. So otherwise, if we said built-in, it would have been in with the built-ins up above. But it's right there. Cool. You can see when you hover over it that the pop-up comes up about what this is about. And we can right-click on it to edit the properties, meaning if we want to change it and say, okay, it's not about whatever. And we want it in a different gallery, not the description I want. You can make changes there. But after you insert it, let's go ahead and do it again. Click and drag. And then click on it to insert it. There you go. Puts it right there. That if you make some changes and you're like, okay, I just want the ghost here. And then maybe I'll just do the whatever down below. In any case, you made some changes, you like it. Go ahead and click on the board of the box. And then go back up to insert, to text box, to save your selection. And then type in what. And then, you know, fill in the rest. Click okie dokie. And it says, do you want to redefine the building block entry? In other words, update it, overwrite it. So that's how you can go ahead and override it. We'll say no, but I wanted to show you, you can do it that way. Let's go ahead and click off of it. Click on text box again, click and drag to scroll down. And then right click on it. And then if you're done with it, and you want to delete it. That's the last thing we want to do here. Click on organize and delete. And it opens up the building blocks organizer. And it's got it selected by default, whatever. And you can see an image of it, preview, and the description. And if you want to go ahead and edit it, brings up the same window. You can go make your changes to it, click cancel, or delete it. Are you sure? Yes, it's gone. So it's no longer available in any new documents that I create. Close out, not save it. Oh yeah, if you're like, hey, wait a second. When I inserted this into the other document, it was orange, where here it's red. Remember, in an earlier training video, we talked about on the Design tab, let me click up here, the themes. So this document has one theme as opposed to all new documents I create, which has another theme. So when I click on this and I hover over it, you can see how it updates the text box. Well, there's organic and orange. In any case, go ahead and watch my training video on themes if you don't know anything about themes. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.